know this is probably the closest thing I'll see to heaven on earth. You know, because like when we go to heaven, don't you expect to be a festivity time? You. <laughs> All of you in the conversation seats, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? <laughs> How many of you remember that from the news? It's 10 o'clock. Do you remember, know where your children are? How come they don't say that anymore? All right. I welcome you to worship this Sunday in ordinary times. We go to the green. Oh my gosh, green is so boring. But is green boring? Heck no. Look at the trees and look at all the beauty that we, that we see in the green. I have quite a few announcements. So if you will, the first thing I'd like to announce is that we are going into the summer services so the liturgy is different starting today. So you will be following your bulletin, but one of the best parts about it is that the hymns during Holy Communion are hymns for you to also join and sing along um, with the hymns. So if you'll notice some of the changes, it, you'll get used to it before we change it again. I have some sad news. Um, a member of our congregation, Les Canton, died last week, and he was buried on Thursday at St. John's, which is his family, um, it, his family church. I guess that's where his whole um, generations even that grew up. So. Um, that is a sad thing. We weren't expecting it. There was a special um, prayer shawl that was made for him in the colors of South Carolina just to fit across his lap. And I had the great, great gift of meeting his social worker. And Jerry, she is going to make sure that that gets passed on to another South Carolina fan in a wheelchair it is perfect and um so um we have been praying this congregation for six months for an infant that was born premature weighing one pound um his name is murphy crail or crawl and he passed this week after six months so if you would all keep his family and Jerry, one of our um, members, in your prayers as they go through this journey that has to have been a real act of faith, a real act of endurance, and a real act of the presence of Christ. Next week, we remember Mission Lexington as the second Sunday in the month what we're going to do, council approved, we don't know how long this will last, but that Sunday, the second Sunday of the month, when we remember Mission Lexington, we will have a noisy offering for the children to take to, um, to contribute. So if you will bring your coins, they will have pots that will make sounds, but the favorite sound of all is silence when it drops in. So we're calling it a noisy offering, but this will be offerings for Mission Lexington. Now the big celebrations of today, Miss Emily Call is going to be confirmed here today during our service. Oh, I forgot something. And then on the yellow page, if you look at the back side, right following our prelude, we will do the blessing of the graduates. Ansley Elizor will be graduating from River Bluff, and Tally Roche will be graduating from River Bluff also. The three below, Emerson Fight, Nolan Phillips, 
and Blake Ranch will be graduating from college. So if you see them, you can remember them. But we came here to be in the presence of Christ. We pray we came here to be with each other, to hear the good things that are happening and to share in the sorrows for those that we know are mourning this day. Let us clear our minds because you can pick up whatever you brought in right at the door when you leave. But for right now, you are in the presence of Christ. Let us listen to the prelude and feel his presence in this place. to come forward. Look, you each get a side. <laughs> if you'd be on different sides of the font, that would be perfect. <laughs> Come on. <coughs> what if I, I, I feel like I'm doing a wide angle camera picture. What do I do with the microphone? You go take a picture? How does it feel? Scary being up in front of the church, isn't it? It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. Let's start with you, Tally. Would you mind telling us what your plans are for the future? Um, Introduce I'm, yourself. Oh, I'm Tally Rout, and I'm going to Florida Gulf Coast University, majoring in elementary education. How are you going to handle being away from your family? Say it'll be I'll, miserable. I'll mother. call my mom every night. <laughs> Miss um, Ansley? I'm Ansley, and I'm going to be going to Clemson University and majoring in nursing. What are you following? Are you following in the footsteps of your father? I guess my mom. There you go. There you go. Well, you know, in Psalm 139, it says, I knew you. 
before you were woven in your mother's womb. And I know every day written for you in the book of life. This is probably your first steps away from your first level of real security. This is the beginning of your journey of life. And every one of us have made it, have we not? And it's a good thing we have Skype. And it's a good thing that we have telephones because it'll be just as hard on you as it will be on you, Valley. I knew you before you were woven in your mother's womb. The one who created you is the one who has been with you. The one who created you is the one who will follow with you. And your journey has good plans ahead. I'd like you to remember in simple water that you are a child of God baptized into Christ. You are a child of God baptized into Christ. Let us pray. Oh, most good and gracious God, as Ansley and Tally, as well as Emerson, Nolan, and Blake, begin this new adventure of their lives. We trust that you are with them, that you will walk with them, you will guide them, and you will always be there. Bring comfort to their parents who have that terrible feeling of kicking their baby out of the nest. May they also know that you are always there to be with them. Keep them strong, build up their confidence, and let them know how loved they are in you. Amen. You know, the water falls off of us, doesn't it? But it left a mark on your forehead when you were baptized the first time. Nobody else sees it. God always sees it. I'm going to anoint your forehead and the cross that was placed on you when you were baptized with oil. You cannot wipe oil off. And remember that Christ is with you. Tally, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now give me your little hands, because that's going to do the work, isn't it? There you go. May your hands do all God's work. But may you have a lot of fun on the journey. <laughs> Miss Anne. It's oil. It's so cool. And it smells like this oil is from Israel. Oh, yeah, we're not just using any oil. <laughs> Ansley, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace now and forever. That was intense, wasn't it? Oh, <sighs> child. These are your hands to do God's work. This is the oil that will be in your hands. May you know that Christ is with you, and may your journey be full of fun. Amen. I introduce to you your two high school graduates from Zion Lutheran Church, Tally and Ansley. And I ask your prayers for their parents and for their brothers and sisters who, for the first time, will really miss you. <laughs>
All right, thank you. <laughs> oh, geez, the best part, I thought. <laughs> This is just a small token for you to take with you as you both go away um, from the Christian Ed Committee and all of your family at Zion to remember you, to remember us, that we're here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You're tall. All who are able, please stand for a brief order of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Let us greet one another in Christ.
no, no, no. You're like, I gotta get, we gotta get this. We just gotta get this. of our risen Lord, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, throughout time you free the oppressed, heal the sick, and make whole that all you have made. Look with compassion on the world wounded by sin, and by your power, restore us to wholeness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We would invite our children to come forward now for a special message.
So I always like to start the children's message with a call and response. I say, I was glad when they said unto me, and then everybody else says, let us come into the house of the Lord. You got it? I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. And here we are in God's house. And I am glad to be with you. Thanks for sitting so nicely, you guys. Uh, this is summertime, right? We're kind of on summer vacation. Is school out for you guys? Yeah. You're done? Oh, you have two more days, two and a half more days? Yeah. Soon it will be summer for you too. What's it like when it's summer? A little bit easier schedule, no homework at night, don't have to get up early to catch the bus or get to school. It's sort of a relaxed time, right? It's kind of calm. But even when you're on summer vacation, do you, well, let's just imagine this. Let's imagine that your friend's cat climbed up a tree and couldn't get down. Would you still have to go up and help get that cat down? Even if it's summertime and you don't have another kind of schedule, you'd still have to do that, right? What if you were sick? It's summer, no schedule, relaxed. Would you still go to the doctor? Yes. Well, if today's God lesson, it's the Sabbath, which is a day of rest, kind of like summer. And Jesus healed a man. And guess what all the other people said? <gasps> he shouldn't do that! He broke the law of rest. Does that seem right? It seems right that he should be punished for helping someone? No, that does not seem right. Let's talk some more about how we can honor the day of rest. Can you guys walk really quietly out with me? Because I want to make a special stop. H Hamilton, come, Hampton, come this way. I want to make a special stop. The first reading is from Deuteronomy. Observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy, as the Lord your God commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. <coughs> you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your ox or your donkey or any of your livestock or the resident alien in your towns, so that your male and female slave may rest as well as you. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 81, verses 1 through 10, responsively. Sing with joy to God our strength, and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Praise the song and sound of the temple, the merry heart and the light. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon, and at the full moon, the day of our feast. For this is a statue for Israel, the law of the God laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph, going out over the land of Egypt, where I heard a voice I did not know. I used your shoulder with a burden burden. Your hands were set free from the grave to your statue. You called on me in trouble, and I delivered you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people. 
and I will admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide. Gospel according to Mark, chapter 2, beginning at verse 23. Glory to you, Lord. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you ever read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God where Abathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue and a man was there who was withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. They looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of hearts and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The word of God for the people of God. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is yet to come. I'll bet you the Pharisees would have a seizure if they knew how we observe the Sabbath. I, to be honest with you, the idea of a Sabbath doesn't even fit into my realm of living, does it? No, the idea of one day of rest? Heck no, I want a weekend. I live in a country where I'm entitled to a weekend. What's one day? What's, what's one day? day? But, but what's, what's worse is the other side of that, what's, what's one day? day? Who the heck wants to work six days straight? We don't live in that world that we understand this anymore, do we? We live in a world where our comforts are of the greatest needs. 
We live in a selfish world. But you, you somehow heard the call of God today. Somehow, you got yourself up, got yourself dressed, and got here. Could you have heard the word of God on the lake, behind a ski boat? Are they going to talk about the word of God at the graduation celebrations? Do you think scripture is going to be read at these parties, wherever we are? This is where we hear the word of God. We don't understand Sabbath. But Sabbath was created for us. We were not created for the Sabbath. You know what that tells me? God is the one who's always doing the work. God is always working in us, even when we're not working in God. We can run away, but God never leaves us. We can turn our backs, and God is always there. We can think we're moving on in our own independence, but the God who knew, knows us, who created us, who loves us, will never, ever be away from us. I knew you before you were woven in your mother's womb. And I know every day written in the book of life for you. What greater comfort is that? What greater comfort could that be that in all of our unlovableness, in all of our pettiness, in all of our frustration and selfishness, we're still lovable. This is a place to come for Sabbath, even when we don't know or think or believe that this is a Sabbath thing, because this was not created for us to do something. This Sabbath is a gift that God gives to us. So, what I'd like you to do is get the hymnal out and open your hymnal to 532. This is the Sabbath. Here, here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new life. Here you shall call your sons and daughters. Call us anew to be salt of the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion. Give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. It's a gift. God does the work. You come to this place. You hear the word of scripture. You take the bread 
the very body of Christ. You drink the cup, the new life that Christ gives you. You may not be back next week. You may not be back for years. But what Christ has given you lasts as long as it needs to. Here in this place, you have been gathered in. You have been gathered in today to celebrate. You have been gathered in to mourn with those who have lost lives. You have been gathered in to be together in the body of Christ. Gathered in to pray that your soul, that your heart, that you are good soil. To take out into the world all that has been given to you. Amen. following person has been instructed in the Christian faith and is approved by the church for the right of confirmation. I present Emily Catherine Call, 
who desires to make public affirmation of her baptism. Will you please come forward? Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for this sister to whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called her to yourself, enlightened her with the gift of your spirit, nourished her in the community of faith. Uphold this, your servant, in the gift and promise of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from God's word his living purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished by his holy table and called to be a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Emily Catherine Call. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Yay! You may all stand, please. I ask this not only of you, Emily, but of all your brothers and sisters. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace on earth. If so, say, I do and I ask God to guide and help me. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from our sin and rise us to eternal life. Continue to strengthen us with your Holy Spirit and daily increase in us your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord. Beep, beep, beep.
If you will place your hands, I'm going to turn this way and she can face the altar. Miss Emily. I love that we do this at the baptismal font. This is where it all stand started for you. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Emily the call of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith. Guide her life. Empower her serving. Give her patience in suffering and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Yeah, that's where the work gets done, isn't it? Tops of the pretty stuff. Emily, you are a child of God created in God's image and loved beyond all understanding. I now declare to you that you are confirmed and received as a full adult member of this congregation with all the privileges and responsibilities of discipleship to Jesus Christ. We, we rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks, thanks and praise to God and, and proclaim the good news to all the world. I introduce to you the newest member of Zion Lutheran Church. Miss Emily, I have some gifts for you. Besides your confirmation certificate, no two of these crosses are identical, just as you are so unique. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Beep. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. That's for you, my sweet girl. And that's for you. Thank you. <laughs> Lord God Almighty, as we are gathered for worship to keep this Sabbath day holy, Remind us of the history of our salvation, that we may marvel at your love and obey all your commandments. Loving God, you hear our prayers. You live among us. Holy Spirit, lift up our voices to sing and shout our joy for your rescue of us from meaningless selfishness and despair. For you are alive and among us. Loving God, you hear our prayers. You live among us. God of joy, we give you thanks for accepting into your kingdom through holy baptism. Today we pray for Emily as she affirms her faith and becomes Zion Lutheran Church's newest member. We pray that she daily might turn to you and throughout her life, see and trust the presence of Jesus Christ always with her. Loving God, you hear our prayers. You live among us. Soften the hardness of our hearts and heal us all that would wither without your constant strength and healing. Loving God, you hear our prayers. Live among us. Lord of the Sabbath, you gave us this day for recreation of our spirits. And we give thanks for every holy word that we hear in worship. Loving God, you hear our prayers. You live among us. The newborn, the strong, and the dying are all charges under your care, Lord God. 
Bless us and hear us as we speak the names of those we know who long for help and healing. As the school year comes to close, bless all students and guide all graduates, especially our graduates, Ainsley and Tally. We lift up each person named on our prayer list, those homebound, and all friends of this congregation that need your touch, those who come to our mind and on our lips, William and Landon. Those whom we do not know and have no one to pray for them, as well as those who think that they need you the least. Loving God, hear our prayers. You live among us. The love of God has won. The new life has begun. Amen. May we pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and call us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and also at the end. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our right and our duty to give thanks and praise to you at all, all times and in all places, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus <coughs> Christ. And so with the choirs of the angels, oh no, no Lamb of God. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And gave it to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all peoples for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me. O oh Lord, remember us when we come into your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. commune today by intinction. A piece of bread will be placed into the palm of your hand. You may take it to the chalice and receive the blood and the life of Christ. If you are gluten intolerant or need grape juice, please let us know when you come forward. The body of Christ.
please stand. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you now and forever in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. And in your name we pray. Amen. I invite those who will be bringing home communion to come forward. Yours, Carolette and Edith. You have a fancy name tag. Burns and Jeff. Oh, you have yours. How wonderful. How wonderful. I'd like you to exchange it with someone else. Swap, swappy, swappy. Just take another person's. I guess I could have done that in the beginning. You have no idea where these, where these are going, do we? We don't know what we're going to meet when we go into someone's home to bring them Holy Communion. You don't know if their world is going the way they want it to go or whether it's upside down. I ask you to bless me, join me in blessing these elements to go where they need to be where you have the strength to be Christ's hands, feet, and share with those. Lord God, bless the journey of this bread and water, bread and wine through these hands and feet. Bless the journey of those who bring this bread and wine and give strength and energy to the hands and feet that bring it. Heavenly Father, bless these elements of wine and bread to bring life and compassion and bless the hands and feet that carry it to them. Bless these elements, Lord. You, your body, your wine. Bless it and bless those who carry it to those who cannot be with us. Lord God, you are life. And in these elements of bread and wine, you bring life. Bless those who bring and bless those who receive. Heavenly Father, here are your hands and feet here from this place of Zion Lutheran Church. May your good works be done and all to your glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. May you receive the blessing. May the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God.